And we're back. Nocturnal Ducky with a brand new deck just for you and your sweet, sweet head. And this is a Croxa combo. Let's check it out. and welcome back thank you so much to mtg jeff for the shout out i'm a huge fan you're the reason why i got into this in the first place i mean not necessarily magic but doing the youtube channel uh, your main inspiration my channel uh, has gone through a huge sort of roller coaster i've moved up and down the coast of australia in the last you know three or four months and my studio has been in pieces so i'm currently still without my green screen or anything like that but it's a slow burn process and i've just set it up the way i have so i can at least still have content coming out so yes thank you to anyone who's come that's new and welcome i you know enjoy making as many jank banks that i can and less sort of competitive more sort of fun inspired by mtg jeff thank you again um, but yeah, I like to do more sort of janky fun decks, but occasionally I'll do a comp deck. So if you guys are keen, hit me up. I'm always open to do build around certain cards or uh, certain combos. <coughs> Pardon me. But yeah, this is, this is the sort of idea of the channel and that's what I like to do. Um, I'm just very, very grateful for any newcomers that are coming to check out my videos and a massive thank you again to MTG Jeff. So now that I've got all of that out of the way, I would like to jump straight into this Croxa combo deck. Now this one I think people have seen. It's on a few lists. We have the Hushbringer down on turn 2 into a turn 3 Croxa, which gives us a 6-6. Six, six. And none of the ETBs happen, so they don't discard a card and we, you know, don't have to sacrifice it. So it works good. But the Clackbridge Troll as well. We all know that that one with the Hushbringer where they just don't get the tro they don't get the goats. So that's sort of a good combo. But having the Troll and the Croxer together really sort of double over the value of having the Hushbringer combo. So that's the main sort of cheese of what I was trying to do. But then I, th I sort of buddied it up with this enchantment sort of shenanigan with Alphemia where she can exile an enchantment from your graveyard and create a 2-2 zombie and we're going to have Maya's Grasp in our graveyard just by straight removal and then turn that into a zombie and same with any of the sagas so Elspeth Nightmare eventually will be in the graveyard same with Elspeth Conquers Death so they're going to end up being zombies after we use them and also she's an enchantment as well so you can use double copies being legendary, you're going to put one straight in the graveyard. So she can really sort of help. Now with all of these enchantments coming down, combine that with the Archon of Sun's Grace, and we're going to be getting two to Pegasus with Lifelink out of that whole deal. So not only are we going to have a 2-2 zombie, we're going to have a 2-2 flying Pegasus and a removal. So that can be, you know, pretty sweet. Cost us just two mana and then, you know, set ourselves up. The other thing to mention is Banishing Light and Conclave Tribunal. These are here because, you know, you can take anything, anything off the board minus land. And there's points where I literally have taken their whole board, you know, like you stop their big thing, you kill one of their things and take something from their hand, and then you take away the Planeswalker, and out of the whole thing, you're left with a volume of creatures you know and token creatures so the whole combo works amazing together combined with this hushbringer because none of these are etbs right they're all from enchantments this is going to stop only creatures so she is like ignores all of the, all of this enchantment shenanigans that we're pulling and the two two zombies all of that stuff you know so that works really beautifully the Sauron is in here because this is a little bit of a busted tweak. You can just use him to bring this back, right? So turn when you have this down on turn 4, you will have one of these in the graveyard, hopefully. And it's only going to cost 2 to bring it back and get another, you know, card out of their hand or 3 damage to them, whatever. And if you have a Hushbringer, so this is where it can work really good because you can sort of throw these under the bus. You don't have to hold it until you have both of them. You can 
throw, you know, put this down, throw it under the bus as a blocker, or do the whole combo at the start of the game while they've got a grip full of cards and get one out, out of their hand. So that's a good start of the game. And then turn four, you can just bring it straight back when you have the piece down. And it's not going to cost you that much to set that up. The other um, idea too is Elspeth can bring back Soren at the right time. So you can have this end bring this back and then he can bring back a creature and then this is in the graveyard ready for Alphemia. So he could even bring Alphemia back, you know. So there's a few underlying combos. Um, one thing I wanted to say about Helion's punishment, I wanted to try it because, you know, initially I had dead weight, which is a better sort of fit for the Alphemia combo and for, you know, making it cheaper to just get triggers from this but this one is actually quite comical because it takes away their ability to block attack and all of the cards ability so it's just a dead card and all they can do is tap it to take a counter off which sounds a little bit sort of like a slug but the thing is is by the time four counters come off this and then it's still tapped for a turn that's five turns without that creature it's almost as if you've removed it and they've drawn it again. And the idea from that is it loads it in the graveyard ready for a um, you know, zombie, but also we potentially can win the game by then. And the creature that we do have locked down, we can start throwing a few of these uh, things at it if it is a concern. And it, and it doesn't have any stipulation to what it targets. It just, you know, whatever creature. It could be something huge, could be monster, and then we just stop it, completely stop it. So that is an honourable mention because this card has surprised me and the amount of times that the opponent gets decision fatigue and ends up forgetting to tap this and take off the counter is pretty funny. I think it's in one of the games, but yeah. There's a lot of combos and you probably see me slip up and misplay quite a lot, but again, I play for fun and quite janky anyway. But this is still hard to lose with this deck. It's quite fast moving, you can answer every single thing they do and you can play quite conservatively, you can play quite uh, aggressively if you have the Hushbringer and the Croxer turn but in, in opening hand. So turn three, you can do that, then 100% you can be aggressive. So you can sort of shift gear a lot, um, but like I was saying, there is a lot of sort of decisions to be made. The one thing that I would like m more of in the deck, and if anyone has any suggestions, is card draw, because you do run out of cards and you are top decking, but at those, at those points, it's generally, you know, we're top decking better than them. We've removed all of their good pieces and whatever we get's just adding to that. So um, if there's any ideas for what good card draw would be, I mean, the Clackbridge Clack Troll, <laughs> he is our main sort of card draw machine. Um, and that doesn't happen until late in the game, which is where you need it, really. But at the same time, I feel like you know if you wanted to find right pieces at the right time it would be better so any suggestions hit me up the land also I sort of struggle a little bit with the land um, you know the idea I don't have any um, planner beacons to be able to get life back from this which could be an idea but generally he is a life gain machine as well as his passive is all your creatures have lifelink so if you've got like you know this guy down which has lifelink with all your pegasus you're gaining life as it is but if you're attacking with a six croxer with lifelink or an eight clack bridge with lifelink then you're not too worried late game can just completely switch around so yeah i just feel like the land was already janky enough to include that but any suggestions definitely let me know now i will put the deck list in the um comment section below and please feel free to hit me up with suggestions or anything that I'm not seeing because I would absolutely love some feedback and here you know I'll tweak the deck and I could do another video I do have a very you know amazing matchup it's a I think it's a 40 minute match that I recorded so if you guys are keen to see the extended version of this video as well then I could put that up later but you know as it stands I think this deck works quite solid and the opponent sort of can keep up with certain things i think gruel can sort of really punish you um obviously a few control decks but for the most part i've found that of my win ratio was pretty pretty solid you know I've, i ranked up i went through the gold rank with this so yeah definitely definitely check it out and let me know don't forget to like subscribe follow
and I shall be dropping more content more frequently. So if there's anything you want to see, make sure you hit me up in the coming few days and I will try my best to work around it. And lastly, thank you again, MTG Jeff. You are a legend king among men. For the love of donuts, check out the video. Okay, that's good. Got all our colors. A couple of answers straight away and a zombie, hopefully. Black down first. So I'll scry. A good hand. Okay, he's there. Going for a scar. Hmm. We try for the hush bringer first. No. I like him too much. Okay. Sweet. And now, that or an answer? No. Very well. I'm going to take your oven. So, to creature down, we're pretty happy. Beautiful. He's not going to like my next move. damage and we exile that for a zombie we got a little train going that's good we can still stop and answer whatever he puts down but we're hoping for a land thank you tapped land Kill. I'll just go in for four damage now down to 12. Yeah, and turn. Wow. Down to 8. Put anything down, I'm pretty sure we're good. So he's going to destroy. He's waiting for a red that whole time. Poor fella. Poor fella. Five damage.
Okay, so we can get some life back here. isn't the best obviously we don't have a black we're gonna scry hopefully into one okay you wanted to try first jeez how pushy such a pushy fellow blink fox blink fox Okay, man. Jeez. Good. Well, there's the black. What we wanted. Sword erasure. I should bring it to the graveyard. So, we can at least kill that next turn. Alright, so, if we survive here, I'm trying to make it so I can do both of these. Like he's just gonna answer that straight away. Next turn I can do that. This turn we go like this. Next turn we can hush bring it and Croxa. for the thief. Turn late, but still got there. I was playing around any removal. Okay. So, nothing. Yes, so we block here. And then we can... Do this. I guess we could do that. Have a good blocker. And do our solid damage. Or. Our female. Then into taking that. Swinging in. So, if he double blocks here, that's kind of good. Look at. Now we'll make a 2 2. I didn't think he would scoot, but 
Ooh. Ranked up. Nice. Alright, so Mulligan. Put back a harsh bringer. Consider it. Mainland, we can go for a scry first. Um, we need a land. Okay. Land, so that's... Right, so I think we just wear the one damage for now. Another land, good. Now we can go into a Hushbringer, the block, we'll destroy one under the bus. Essentially, even beam it, but good to get a trigger off her straight away. down has to force an answer Do you have any removal or is going to attack for us because we want the him out of the way anyway we'll get a life back and next turn we can pay in that in if we get a croxa and pay play both of them so my feeling is going to have lots of death touch things no croxa Another pain land. I think we get both of these down. So next turn should be pretty nice. We keep the hush bringer. You, buddy. So, we'll drop our hand next turn. Hopefully, we can get a hush bring. That'd just be incredible. There's this other murderous rider. That's pretty nice. 
That's pretty nice as well. So now, hopefully, a springer, maybe even a siren would be good. Oh, thank you, siren. Welcome to the party, mate. Minus two. Get back a hushbringer. No, tax. Hopefully he doesn't have another murderous rider. gonna do sure. I'm gonna throw Emia under the bus here we can get our crocs down that's so I should try and bring back something else like with the siren. That's not too shabby. Bring back another Ashbringer, I guess. We'll go with this first. Femia. It's hoping to draw something better there. Let's make it a one, two. Interesting. Could have done that better, but need some more banishing lights. Really need a big chunky card draw right now. blocks but he's own a female sweet
Okay. Got these murderous riders as well. Mm. Oh, looks of it, no enchantments in the graveyard. You can also make tokens with his Dawn of Hope. Yep. So you'll probably throw them under the bus. Under the Croxa. And get a card draw from that. Unless I can find... Grasp. That'd be pretty nice. So, sacrificing a vampire, right? A springer, wow. Sorry. Might as well put Murderous Rider under the bus, but look at my life total. Two damage. Okay, you could have kept Siren. Gain two life. Interesting. He's got to try and get rid of that Croxa. Then he sets the Alphemia free, gives us more ammunition. Doesn't have any enchantments. There he goes. There he goes. But now we can get it back.
Okay. He's gonna get his alphemia back now. More ammo for us. If I drop this, I could do that too, right? So one, two, three, four, five, yeah. <clears throat> so depending on what we draw, the grass would be better. timer until he finds an answer for the troll. <sighs> I don't know what he's thinking here. Yes, yeah, so you can see Grox is still there. I can get rid of it. And sorry, get rid of it. I can use it as well. card I can draw a little hand Please. Go for another card draw. No. Oh. Graveyard. Oh, because I made him discard it with the proxies. I see. I just can't believe how many lands I'm digging into here. Look at that, another land. Yeah. 
if he wipes out the Roxa. for it. Wait. We're back up to 17. We get rid of him too. Make one of our own. This is a game of growth. Draw lands. Just the uh, total lands. Bring him back. Another trigger. Next to combat. Right, if he decides not to sacrifice and throw vampire underneath. That's good, because we've got a lifelink. So we're going all in here, try and exchange the board, where we come out better on the other side. Alright. So... Exchange them. I'm a good thing here. But the, the point is getting a lot of life. 
moving that, that guy out of the way. So, three damage. He's gonna have to make tokens to sacrifice constantly to the troll, which is gonna give us card draw and life gain. <laughs> Stay in the game. Emptying his hand. Still got another card draw or another three life, so you can climb back up pretty easy. This is a pretty solid match. So he's inclined to swing for Soren. Gonna swing in at Soren. Oh, wow, he kept Soren. Incredible. Um, let's take him out of the equation. Now we get another life. Got a combat. Going to sacrifice one of these dudes. Sacrificing these. Oh, sacrificing Croxa then. Why did I say Croxa? Um, yes. And we're going to take away his Dawn of Hope. <laughs> I feel, feel evil saying that. Alright, next to blockers. Another life. Eight. 38. Dawn of Hope's gone. We get a zombie. This has been a pretty crazy match. Good matchup. Alright, so. Minus two. Three damage. Combat. Has to do that. And 
fall unless he's going to block. He is. And we'll take away his Sauron. I think that's just locked it up a bit. Don't you? Interesting. The game. Forty five. Good game. I mean, if he board wipes, yeah, that's still the game. Oops. Well, we got there in the end. <laughs>